friends and they have Valkyrie. Oh, shit. Okay. What did you say? Your show ends and they have an hour. Yeah, 22 minutes. Okay. That'll be enough time. You can do whatever you want, I can. Hello. Buenas noches. Bonsoir. C'est plein écli. Un autre fois. Uh, the 25th of January. And uh, if you were able to see Richard Rand's show uh, before this, uh, Nick Fell um, was the guest host of Richard Rand's and asked me to uh, sit in as a guest, and it was really fun. Um, and they got three calls. Ooh. Yeah, that was really happening. Oh, I should show Nick over here. Nick is right there. We are in the two shot. Hello. Three, the number of manifestation. So. And then number three is Nick himself alone. Thank you again for tuning in. And uh, without viewers like you, we couldn't exist here. And we really need this uh, outlet for the truth uh, coming through this channel. Yeah, it's too bad you can't really see the call-in number. Is uh, 415-861-6648. And uh, I think I'm going to go back to me and say, oh. Oh, that's Nick cool. Psychedelic. I like that. I like that. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> How about, Nick, if we start, we're at YouTube. Can we do... Uh, Four years ago, this this live one. For a sure, and and live recordings aren't that great on YouTube, but uh, hey, you get some idea and. Uh... <laughs> There's a psychedelic break, but not that psychedelic. There we are again. Back to the beginning. The song. This is our one long song we were able to do at this anniversary of Monterey Pop. I should be quiet while it's playing, right? I'll talk for a little bit here, and then I'll let some of the music play. Uh, this particular cut that you're seeing right now, if you could hear me, uh, okay. Oh, yes, um, and this was, uh, in 2012, and this was the 35th anniversary of the Monterey Pop Festival. If you ever saw the original famous movie, you could tell that nothing has really changed. It's like a racetrack, kind of old, sort of 40s, 50s uh, clubhouse type structure. And where our guitarist is standing, actually, between himself and me, uh, a little closer to him, is the famous spot that's marked on that stage where Jimi Hendrix burned his guitar. And we all went over and took turns standing on it. Um, so right right a little maybe for the viewers to see to the right of our guitarist there in the green Hawaiian shirt a little bit over toward the middle no other way right about there is where Jimi Hendrix burned exactly where he burned his guitar the famous uh, uh, Monterey Pop uh, uh, performance he did that's Crystal Chamber there playing bass and singing not yet, but she's one of the singers. And Nick on drums, a percussion. Mike Pickle on guitar. Bill Keeney on drums. Puppets by Shadow Circus Creature Theater. 
Richard Rance is the live puppet, Green Bunny. And we have some other fire people come out. It was a very nice time. And because there was infighting with the old hippie echelon, we could not refer to this show here as the 35th anniversary of the Summer of Love. We had to say, era of Monterey Pop, we had to say it was the 35th anniversary of the Summer of Love at the Monterey Pop site. So you know how those things go as time goes on and people bicker over copyrights and things. And it's a shame but it happens, even with the dead Kennedys. The song's called Captivity. It's about uh, us and the animals and humanity being in prison for all these aeons and how through our own revelation we could break free and help other people to do the same thing. Yes. Well, that's pretty cool. It's like the inner spirit. <laughs> and I'm wearing a Mayan calendar shirt because 2012 was the year of the Mayan calendar. And we had no sound check at this big show, so the sound's not that great. But enjoy anyway. the Hendrix spot. We're going to hear maybe another two minute, minute and a half and then we can fade it out or whatever. Um, she's supposed to be singing, but because we had no sound check, uh, you cannot hear her because her mic, something is going on, but she comes in a little later. Yeah. But again, as I want to reiterate, as a lot of musicians know, when you play huge festivals and you're not a super, super, super huge famous band, you never know what's going to happen. Your set time gets changed, it gets cut. Who knows? So we were just lucky to be here and, you know, get to perform for 17 minutes. Uh, be on that magical site. Maybe uh, we could play a little bit of the guitar escape coming up and then fade it out and do whatever you want then. This song was actually written back in the 80s and has uh, actually had more and more different parts added on as time goes on and it's one of our longest songs, a 15 minute song. Um, yeah. Culminates with a uh, drum solo slash jungle noise animal break. We'll play a little bit of the guitar thing here and then uh, a little alien influence. Spaceships uh, leave now. And Mike Pickle is a great, been playing in the Bay Area since the 80s. Uh, he had his own band here, Ring Children. He used to play with them at the old I Beam and Night Break. And uh, yeah. Thank you for playing so much of this. Wow, I'm, I'm blown away and flattered and everything. Thank you. Because of no sound check, I sound louder than the music. But, you know, again, you never know. Right on. It's kind of a 60s mix. Stripey tights and blue hair. And <laughs> All right, we can kind of do that now. People get some kind of idea. All right. And on this side, it's uh, Live at Slim's. What's that? What else Live at you? Slim's was from, um, uh, that was from early April of 2013, and we actually played with uh, Matt Gonzalez's brother's band. Uh, Matt ran for mayor here, Chuck Gonzalez, the Cuckoo Birds, and uh, Linda Imperial's band, uh, whose husband is David Freeberg, the uh, 
he plays guitar now in, uh, well, Quicksilver Messenger Service was his original band, and now he plays in Starship. Okay. So that was a kind of interesting show. Well, uh, which one do you, like... That was the Slim show. They've got Hotwire, um, Galaxy Chamber at Tidal Wave 2002. Um, uh, that would be cool. Uh, the 2002... Uh, I know, I'm taking off for Kyle. There you go. That's making me hungry. <laughs> oh, this is a, here you go. This is a local show on this channel called Reality Check. And, uh, yeah, so nice tie together, Jennifer, with including them as well by default because we've been interviewed with uh, five times. And, uh, Danny and Ace and, uh, um, uh, Hugh. And all those guys, they've been here to, for a long, long time. Reality this used check. to be uh, a, a, a housemate of, of mine. I think you told me that a while yeah. back. Wow. So I was surprised when he was on... Um, the reality checks. Yeah. Now, this is a kind of a mashup, and this was a metal festival, so it's kind of we're kind of doing a goth metalier thing. We... We're kind of eclectic, so we curtail our shows to whatever scene we're playing in. In fact, that's been some of our downfall. We're too eclectic. Uh, but this is a beautiful place, McLaren Park, in 2002. How could, how could you, your music be too eclectic? Well, one, a couple of people said over the years, like, a song from you guys is like, each song's like it could be from a different band. But I... Oh. Like that about the 60s and 70s bands that they were very eclectic. They do a ballad, they do a renaissance, they do blues, they do punk, you know. And I've always just, uh, you know, being Aquarius is an eclectic sign. Sure. Groups. Yes. Into groups. Yes. So I like to hear it. Yeah. And then uh, we were doing Millennium Madness, which uh, actually got used by the Nash Bridges show. In 1999, this is a snippet of Insanity Beckons, a song uh, uh, Crystal's doing. And that was with Coffee John on guitar at that point, and we had the famous Mayhem on keyboards, Crow Mayhem. A dark kind of gothy thing in the middle of the afternoon on a sunny day in McLaren Park. I love it. Yeah, the I juxtaposition. Do. It's. <laughs> so what was that song where you had the knife? That song was called Insanity. And that's Stuttering Dan. And it's about well, that's Crystal, but yeah. Stuttering Dan's Pretty talking to her. Yeah. Well, or Dan, I guess I'd say. Because she goes around with a knife and then she started ripping like my clothes with the knife. <laughs> ah, okay. Now this is a Christian death cover we're doing um, off their first album called Stairs and Prayer. Yeah, and then we were in the Gloom Cookie comic. This is all back about God, 13 years ago, when it was a lot easier to survive in the city. There was more fun things going on, less survival issues. More nightclubs, more cool shows happening. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was so different. And again, I think McLaren Park, uh, that's Jerry Garcia Amphitheater now. They renamed it. But it's a beautiful place out there. Yeah. I like it, too. I, I I've been there. Um, actually, my mom was born here. Uh, they it, they used to use it for uh, Irish. Dancing. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. She yeah. and her sister performed Irish dancing there. They should uh, film a movie there. It's got the stone seats. It mm -hmm. looks like some ancient amphitheater. And uh, We were on another episode that's really cool of Reality Check about a year earlier at a thing called Pagan Pride. 
And we did a whole different type of set. We did kind of a more uh, fairy realm, mellowy, Celtic-y kind of uh, set. Uh, the stage was falling apart. I remember, though, we had to watch out that we didn't get hurt. But that was fun. And that was, uh, that was another sh uh, reality check show a year earlier. But, uh, again, Pagan Pride. Day? Pagan Pride. Um, I don't know if it's uh, it'll show up there, but uh, uh, I believe that New York City Pagan Pride Day Festival of Houston. No, this was two thousand three. Um, uh, it's kind of funny after we were done playing Bob from Fluff Girl, um, a famous. They used to be our butthole surfers of San Francisco. <laughs> He threatened to take off all his clothes because there's a pagan pride, and, and all the old pagan came around. No, don't do that, Bob. But uh, anyway, he's he's missed Bob Madigan, and uh, Barney, his uh, the other part of the band, and Mike were great. Uh, they were a great band. We have a caller, and 15 minutes ago. Hello. Yeah, yeah, how are you doing? Uh, got got a couple of questions for Nick here. Uh oh, it's did a did you ever? Actually, see the original uh, Quicksilver. The original what? Quicksilver mess messenger surf. Um, I well, you mean the original when they were around in the late sixties? Yeah. Uh, no, because I was not old enough and was not living here. But uh, we actually, my first introduction to them was um, the old Galaxy Chamber opened for Zero, John Cipollina's band at the old Chi Chi Club in nineteen eighty eight. And I picked up their first album, and then started to learn all about, uh, you know, them and everything. But uh, but why do you ask? Oh, uh, uh, I live next to Golden Gate Park, and they they were all all the time one of the groups in the park. Wow, wow, you're lucky. Wow, wow, <laughs> man. <laughs> Back in the old days. Yeah, yeah, I love uh, that song, Gold and Silver, off the first album, and. Uh, the old Galaxy Chamber used to do a cover of Pride of Man, which is off the first album. I I, I really enjoyed the Fool. The Fool is great. It's off that album as well. And uh, Oh, and David uh, Freiberg told me uh, they call that Quicksilver Messenger Service, they were all Geminis in the really? band, which is ruled by Mercury. So there was an astrology behind the name, yeah. Uh, by the way, I'm a Gemini. <laughs> wow, and, and San Francisco is ruled by Gemini, so you're in the right place. <laughs> uh, the, the other thing was about you were talking about being too eclectic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh the Beatles were about as eclectic as you can get. It was kind of cool to be like that back then. Um you know, and uh unfortunately music kind of started to get so categorized by the early 80s that um uh, you know, it it's kind of has all these compart compartments now and that Well, but, uh, it, then, then but the you're next right, the Beatles were to great. Stop doing that. I I agree. I agree and uh you know, stuff like what happened to KUSF, uh, you know, college radios disappearing, um, radio stations, the left-hand side of the dial, radio stations that was bequeathed to people and public voices back in the 20s, and now conglomerates are trying to buy them all up. But yeah, I agree. And uh, the Yeah, I, I, I would know. recommend stay eclectic. Right. Well, cool. Well, we're moving more into that era again, and uh, there's more and more mashups with the way our culture is. So yeah, no, I think, uh, you know, that now it'd be more in. Uh, this All is right, a, I'm losing you there. Okay. So uh, I'll talk to you later, Nick. Thank, thank you, Prof, thank you so much. Um, this is a piece uh, called... Uh, thanks for calling in, buddy. Thank you, yes. Uh, Ascension Rising or, uh, uh, or Ascension 2 or Cyrus Rising. And it was actually on the Goth Box compilation along with Bauhaus, The Damned, Switchblade Symphony, Red Lorry, Yellow Lorry, Apocalypse Theater, and a few other bands. It came out in 98. Oh, yeah. With Bauhaus. Yes, exciting. in The Damned. And, uh, in The Damned. <coughs> I, I saw Bauhaus. And Lestat from Cleveland. Holland. Oh, you did? Yeah, in wow. the youth center. So, wow. And the youth center was... <coughs> Bauhaus, uh, again, they were eclectic, actually. Uh, they got this goth tag thrown onto them, but if you take them 
out of that category and just listen to their music, they were very eclectic. Um, yeah. You know. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's still the same, the same people are creating the yeah. music. Yeah, So the voice and the guitars, the drums, they're all the same. Right. And unless, you know, you change... Right. Um, uh, um, you know the um, effects. Inch, inch, or unless, effects. You change, unless you change the effects, the sound is going to be ultimately the same. Um, but uh, yeah, I thank you so much for letting me um, show. Oh yeah, some yeah. Of your it, band and, well, thank um, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and we. Hope to be playing out again this year. We haven't played out since uh, the last show was with Chrome, uh, Helios Creed, Chrome. Uh, that is not us. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, but that was a cool show at the bottom of the hill, which, again, they may be in uh, jeopardy of disappearing. Oh, um, no. no Uh-oh. Why? Uh, because more and more development is encroaching uh, in that area, and uh, no, I suppose to... well, good. I hope that uh, the DNA is disappearing at the end of the year. No, um, at the end of this year, yes. And um, we know that uh, the Elbar Room is safe for now. In fact, uh, um, uh, Matt Shapiro uh, works there. Uh, X of Chemos and. Uh, and everything, and I just talked to him, and he said, uh, you know, things are going really well there, um, and everything. So, but yeah, I mean, there, it's getting to where there's not very many places to play. Hate Street used to be so rocking in the '80s and '90s. I Beam, Nightbreak, even Rock and Robbins, Kennel Club, and uh, yeah, I mean, the I Beam was so cool. I remember working there when. There was only 50 people, and they were making fun of the singer of the band, and it was Alice in Chains, and six months well, later, they were huge. You know, we right. saw these bands. <laughs> I missed that one. Right. But I did see Susie there. Wow, okay, okay. That was, uh, that was really... Speaking of that, one of our big shows, we just got missed. We asked, got asked too late. We were asked to open for The Creatures in Maritime oh, cool. Hall in 98. I, I'm but... sorry. I'm sorry, Nick. Uh, there are people standing at the door. Okay. Well, okay. is your show uh, 22 minutes? Is it? Yes, uh, it is. Okay. Well, thank you again. Uh, thanks for tuning in to Jennifer Glee and Richard Rance. And woohoo, stay informed and right home. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for watching. We'll be cool and just let, let it go.